ah, this is Brooklyn, St. Michael with the School of Aquaponics, and this is Ask the Aquaponics God. Preventing you from becoming a biscuit-headed grower. Today, ladies and gentlemen, I'm pumped, man. I'm not even gonna lie, I just got out from a nap. I had to rejuvenate myself, eat some fruits. Right now, I feel like a million dollars. So, you know, I feel fresh right now. But um, I wanna thank you guys for liking the videos, subscribing to the channel. I sincerely appreciate it. You guys are wonderful out there. Phenomenal, phenomenal viewers out there. So I wanna thank you guys. Now today, what we're gonna be touching on is a little bit about um, the nitrification process and nitrates in your system being dropped or declining. So we're gonna go into that. We have a viewer that has um, left a, um, a question and he wants to know what's going on in the system. The nitrate levels are dropping, but there's no plants in the system. We gotta to touch on that right now. So let's jump right into it right now. Let's get into the question and find out what this viewer is yapping about. So this question comes from Young Moolah. What's going on, Young Moolah? It says, great video, but I'm having a problem in cycling my system and maintaining nitrate even though I have no plants in the system. After adding liquid ammonia, I got a reading of 20 parts per million nitrate a few days later. I stopped adding ammonia and added fish but no plants and my nitrate went down to five parts per million. What's causing that? So let's jump into this real quick. So for those of you guys that don't know, the cycling process or the cycling phase, what he's referring to, is referring to the nitrification uh, process. And this is something that everyone doing aquaponics is gonna have to go through. This is the initial, you know, the startup phase of your system. And basically what this is, is you're gonna be um, converting ammonia, which is produced, you know, in a, under norm, normal circumstances via the fish. You're gonna be converting that ammonia into nitrites um, via a, a bacteria known as nitrosomonas. And then from, that, from there, that nitrite gets converted into nitrate um, using a bacteria known as nitrobacter. And this is what is known as nitrification. And this is very important. That nitrate at the end is the preferred uh, nitrogen source for the plants and vegetables that we grow in aquaponics. So that's going to be a source of nitrogen, the primary source of nitrogen uh, for your, uh, your plants and vegetables. Although they can use ammonium which is the beginning um, stage, that first stage, that ammonia, it's, there's two uh, 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 varied um, uh, forms that ammonia is in, ammonia and ammonium. They can use that ammonium as a source of uh, nitrogen, but that nitrate is the preferred source. Now, in this circumstance here, we got our, um, the viewer here who's saying that the, um, the nitrates, after a few days, went up to 20 parts per million, and then there was no plants in there, no fish. When we put the plants and fish in there, somehow all of a sudden they dropped down to five parts per million. So we need to get down to the nitty gritty and find out what's going on with this. Now, nitrate, like I said, that's the preferred form of nitrogen. So typically what would happen is you put your plants in there, you have your nitrate. Those plants are gonna start removing that nitrate from the water. And if you have, if you're not producing enough nitrate and you have you know, enough plants, or too many plants, then you will eventually see that nitrate start to drop and decline. But in this circumstance, that's not the case. So we gotta get down to it and find out what's going on. But I wanna let you know in advance that nitrate doesn't just vanish out of thin air, right? It doesn't just pop up like Houdini and just boom, all of a sudden it's gone. So there's something going on here that we have to get to the bottom of. Now there's one of three things that could be occurring or it could be all three things. And that's what we're gonna to touch on. Now the first thing that could be occurring or that could have occurred while you were cycling your system is that you could have done a water change somewhere. Now you need to go back and you need to reflect and find out if you did any recent water changes on your system. Because before you put the fish in there, if you would have changed some water out, say you're at 20 parts per million, you changed half that water out or a quarter of that water out with fresh water that has no nitrate in it. Once you add it in there with your, um, your, your uh, current system, 
what it's going to do is because it has no nitrate in there, it's going to dilute that nitrate that you have in there already, along with all the rest of the minerals and nutrients, if it's not in equal or greater value in that water source that you're, uh, um, that you're adding in there, right? So that's one thing that you have to, to um, consider. Now, in a fish-only recirculating system, that's something that has to occur. And in aquariums, those of you guys that raise a fish in aquariums, you know you got to do your uh, water changes. That nitrate will eventually build up. It takes a while, but it will eventually build up to levels that become adverse to the fish. So you have to change that water out, dilute it, put fresh water in there, and it will allow those nitrate levels to decline. So that's one of the reasons or one of the um, events that have, could have occurred or that you could have done unknowingly or you just don't remember, and that could have diluted the nitrate, and that's highly likely. Now, the second um, uh, possibility that could be occurring is that it's possible that you could have denitrification occurring in your system. Now, this is not likely because you say you don't have any fish in there, but it is a possibility. For those of you guys that don't know, denitrification is basically pockets uh, that, that, that are created within the system that become areas of little to no oxygen. Basically, pockets of uh, organic material. It could be um, uh, fish waste. It could be dirt, mud. It could be anything that creates areas where oxygen can't get through. And in result, what happens is you have a different type of bacteria that end up um, developing in, that, in those areas. And since they can't use the oxygen as part of their processes, they have to go and use nitrate. They pull the nitrate ions out of the water and they use those as part of their um, processes. And eventually that nitrate ions or those nitrate ions get converted into a nitrogen gas. So they get vented off, but they get sh the nitrate gets stripped from the system. So denitrification is a big part typically in, um, uh, it, it would be uh, something that's expected in a more established system, but I'm saying that it's unlikely that it's in yours because you say that there's no fish in there. But still, I want you to check, make sure there's no mud or anything in there. You don't have any dirt or, or anything in your filter, anything in that, any, anything in there that could be uh, creating um, areas where there's a little to no oxygen that, um, that, that, that's in there. So you want to go through and do a thorough check of that. So make sure you double check on that. Now, the third thing that could be um, happening or that could have happened to cause those nitrate levels to drop is that you could be doing your testing incorrectly, right? And I'm assuming more than likely you're using the API test kit. Now the API test kit, it has the option in there to test nitrates. But the thing is when you test nitrates using that API kit, it has instructions on there and it tells you to shake that bottle. You have to shake the bottle. And this has happened to me before too, back in the day. If you don't shake the bottle up and you take your test, then the test can come out giving you inaccurate readings. So you have to take, you have to shake that bottle up. I've did it before where I didn't shake the bottle up and I'll take a test. It'll be totally different than after I, sh after I shake it up and then take another test afterwards. So you have to um, be mindful of that. Make sure you go back, pay attention, do another test, run it, test it without shaking it and then test it after shaking it and see if those results change. Because that's one of the, um, that, that's highly likely that that could have occurred, right? I've had experience with that. So that's something that could have occurred. Now, what you need to do from here is, since you've most likely, you said you added the fish, you need to be keeping track of your, you know, your nitrate levels when you're testing right now. Make sure you, as you're feeding, make sure you're testing and make sure you're um, taking note to see how the nitrate is uh, developing and stabilizing over time. And then from there you see if there's nothing else that has dropped or if it doesn't drop again, then you know that the, um, the, the problem is most likely, you know, has been fixed or most likely wasn't a problem, you know, to begin with. It could have been just the bottle wasn't shaken up properly and that you need to go back and just run your test that way. So that's what I would advise. But it's gonna be one, one of those three options that, um, that I named for you. Most likely one of those three, and you need to go back and just double check, think about what you've been doing, and pay attention to what you've been doing. Because like I said, the nitrate doesn't just vamoosh out of thin air, right? It doesn't just go out of thin air. So go back, take your notes, 
pay attention, be attentive to what you're doing, and then um, you should see, you know, some consistency in the in those nitrate levels. When you go back and, and, and examine the options that I've laid out for you, and then um, you can, you know, kind of just reflect on it and pay attention to what you're doing. So with that, hopefully that has helped you out, young moolah, and has helped anyone else out there that is experienced anything similar to this. This is something that's very unusual, doesn't happen, unless, you know, you're just not really paying attention. It could be something that slips up, slips your mind. You could have exchanged water and not paid attention to it, and you're like, hey, what happened? You know, so this is something that, you know, it's unlikely, but it does happen. So hopefully that has helped you out. Anyone else out there, you guys have questions, comments, leave them down below, and then, you know, I'll get them added to the queue. Right, so with that being said, if you guys need more help, more advanced help, make sure to check out the schoolofaquaponics.com. We got paid and free courses, jump into aquaponics paradise, learn the fundamentals of aquaponic growing. That's what's gonna teach you the key, the key to get growing and skip through all the extra stuff. It's gonna get you right to it, the exact things that you need to know to get growing, right? Phenomenal information that's in there. So with that being said, ladies and gentlemen, Thanks again for liking the, uh, the video, subscribing to the channel. I sincerely appreciate it. And with that being said, this is Brooklyn St. Michael with the School of Aquaponics reminding you to stop walking and get you a car.